As the Roman Empire collapses, it breaks apart into fragments represented by ten horns that come out of the fourth beast's head. It broke into its ten basic regions, each representing a tribe of the barbarians. Here's how the provinces of the Western Empire would have been divided at the time when Rome broke apart. Kingdom of Odovacar, Kingdom of Nepos, Kingdom of Syagrius, Ostrogoths, Burgundians, Visigoths, Sueves, Angles, Saxons, Jutes, Welsh, Franks, Vandals, Bosques, Britons, Alemanni, and Moors. That's 17 divisions, not 10. Then an 11th horn shows up among them and uproots three of the other 10 horns. Historically speaking, it's remarkable just how accurate this prediction was. It would only be accurate if you could show that your candidate for the little horn was the one responsible for doing the uprooting. I really don't think you can. It may have desired the three to be uprooted at times, and it may have even ultimately benefited from their removal, but it was not responsible for subduing those kingdoms. The interpretation of Daniel's vision in chapter 7 verse 24 makes it clear that the little horn is the one that does the subduing. With minor variations, historians often date the collapse of the Roman Empire to the year 476 AD. Shortly after that, the Roman Emperor Justinian pulled up stakes and moved his headquarters to the city of Constantinople in the east. Uh, no, that would be Emperor Constantine in 330 AD. You've got the wrong emperor, and you're off by about 200 years. On his way out of town, he essentially handed control of the Western Roman Empire to the Bishop of Rome in 533 AD. Justinian did no such thing, and neither did Constantine. Certain writers like Alexander Flick have said that the removal of the imperial capital to the east in 330 AD made the Bishop of Rome the most powerful man in the West by default. There are arguments for and against that position, but one thing that is certain is neither Constantine nor Justinian ever handed control of the empire to the Bishop of Rome, essentially or otherwise. Following Constantine's departure to the east, Italy continued to have Praetorian prefects, provincial governors, and urban prefects that governed the peninsula, just like most other provinces of the empire. So the absence of the emperor did not leave a void within the civil administration that required papal intervention. Also, within eight years, Constantine was dead, and the Western Empire received not one, but two emperors to govern the European provinces. I've read about the careers of the 4th century popes following Constantine's departure, and although they were heavily involved in ecclesiastical matters throughout that time, I have not seen any evidence that they played a role in managing the Western Empire. Catholic theologian Richard McBrien recognized that the popes of the first four centuries functioned with very limited temporal authority prior to the papacy of Leo the Great. So between 330 and 400 AD, we're really only talking about a very small window of time in which there was an absence of an emperor in Italy or the West. However, even when there was, the civil machinery was still operating and there were no Roman bishops of note who participated in running the affairs of the government. There was just one little problem. Historically, there had been three barbarian tribes who really didn't recognize the authority of the Roman bishop because, among other things, they were caught up in something known as the Arian heresy. Historically, there were more than three barbarian tribes fitting that category. The Visigoths, Sueves, Burgundians, Lombards, and Rugians were all caught up in the Arian heresy as well. So that's eight Arian barbarian tribes that would not have recognized the authority of the Roman bishop, not just three. The Arians mistakenly denied the divinity of Christ. Hmm, where have I heard that before? Arianism says that Jesus Christ was a good man, says he was a prophet, but it says he was not divine. No, the Arians did not deny the divinity of Christ. They recognized Jesus as God, but they maintained that Christ was not co-eternal. He was a created being, not of the same substance as God the Father. That was the main point of contention. And that put them at odds with the Roman Church. And that, in turn, really made the intention of Justinian to make the Roman bishop the head of the church in the West somewhat problematic. The Bishop of Rome's authority over the church in the West had been recognized almost 90 years earlier. This recognition was given through an imperial decree from Emperor Valentinian III in 445 AD, an edict that mentioned the papacy's primacy and called the Bishop of Rome the ruler of the church. Justinian never made the pope the head of the Western church. He simply reaffirmed it. 
I think it would be more accurate to say that the presence of Aryan Germanic tribes in the West, especially persecuting nations like the Vandals, made the prospect of Catholic hegemony problematic. By the time the decree was issued in 533, however... Okay, stop. It was not a decree. It was a letter sent to Pope John II seeking his approval of the Theopaschite formula. The letter mentioned Justinian's affirmation of papal primacy, but the letter did not decree it. John's response to Justinian even confirmed this by acknowledging that the decrees of past emperors had previously recognized papal headship, while Justinian's letter served to testify to what had already been decreed prior to his reign. One of the offending tribes, the Heruli, had already been destroyed by Roman armies. I'm afraid not. You are confusing the kingdom of Odovaker with the Heruli tribe, and although a certain number of heroes did march under Odovaker's banners, the defeat of his military did not constitute the destruction of the Heruli tribe. The heroes maintained a powerful kingdom north of the Danube along the Tisa River, until it was destroyed by the Lombards at the beginning of the 6th century. But that still was not the destruction of the tribe. Twenty years later, the Emperor Justinian granted the Heruli a federate kingdom near the modern city of Belgrade, and it was based on their conversion to Catholic Christianity. The contemporary historian Procopius chronicled the Herules fighting for the Byzantines during both the Vandalic and Ostrogothic Wars. Procopius even went so far as to devote an entire chapter to the continued existence of the Herules in Book VI of his History of the Wars, while in 565 AD the Liber Pontificalis mentions that all of Italy was oppressed by a Heruli revolt led by a king named Sindewald. So, no, the Heruli were not destroyed by 533 AD. In that year, some were in the process of converting to Catholicism, while others were serving in Roman armies. In 534, the Vandals were taken out. And then in 538, the Ostrogoths were defeated by the Roman general Belisarius. The Ostrogoths suffered a major setback in failing to retake the city of Rome in 538 AD, but they were not defeated in that year. The conflict continued for another 15 years, and the fortunes of the war changed for both sides throughout that period until the battles of Busta Galorum and Mons Lactarius decided the war's outcome. Three of the barbarian tribes in the Western Empire had been uprooted. <laughs> Although the Vandals had been uprooted four years earlier, the Heruli were converting to Catholicism around 538 AD, and at that time the Ostrogoths still greatly outnumbered Belisarius's forces despite losing the Siege of Rome. Eight years later, the Ostrogoths under King Totila succeeded in retaking the city. Twice, in fact. And now the path was clear for the Bishop of Rome to assume the grandiose role that the Roman Emperor had intended to give him. Sure, the path was clear. Except there was still a war going on with the Ostrogoths obtaining the upper hand about four years later. And except for the fact that the Aryan tribes like the Visigoths and Sueves maintained their kingdoms in the Western Empire past 538 AD. And except for the pagan Angles, Saxons, Jutes, and Alemanni tribes remaining in the West. And except for the Aryan Lombard tribe that swept into Italy in 568 AD and completely terrorized the peninsula. Yeah, besides all of those minor details, the path was definitely clear in 538 AD. Now, you claim the emperor intended to give the Bishop of Rome a grandiose role. That's an interesting theory. Oh, Ken, did you have something you wanted to share? Justinian, when he put Vigilis on the seat of the bishop, he never intended for Gillis to be anything other than the docile head of the Department of Religion. That's all he intended for him to be. And now the path was clear for the Bishop of Rome to assume the grandiose role that the Roman Emperor had intended to give him. He never intended for Gillis to be anything other than the docile head the grandiose role that the Roman Emperor had intended. He never intended the grandiose role he never intended Now again, think about the amazing detail in this prophecy. Hundreds of years in advance, it predicted that three of the barbarian tribes would be destroyed. Not two, not four, not ten, just three. But the Heruli tribe was not destroyed. As I've said before, Procopius mentioned the involvement of several thousand Heruli troops during the Vandal and Ostrogothic Wars. The heroes do disappear from the historical record toward the end of the 6th century, but so do the Sueves. Their kingdom was destroyed by the Visigoths, and the Sueves disappeared from history a few decades later. The same could be said about the Rugians. They occupied the province of Noricum Repens sometime after 476 AD. 
The Rugian kingdom was later destroyed by Odovacar, and the remains of the tribe followed the Ostrogoths into Italy. The Rugians completely disappear following the Ostrogothic War. So, if we discount the Heruli, that leaves two tribes destroyed. If we include tribes like the Heruli, ones that hung around for a little while but slowly faded into the recesses of history, the total jumps up to five. Either way, three tribes, and only three, were not destroyed by 538 AD. It's really pretty simple. While world events continue to baffle the brightest minds on the planet, there really is someone who's got it all figured out. Oh, you meant God. My bad. He never intended